Shall I pick geography? Hmm, I'm not sure. Let's go and find out. Oh, I wonder what Mr. Reed has to say about physical geography. Sir? Oh, hello there. Um, for your GCSE uh, geography, you studied the physical environment results. Well. your first paper. You studied changing landscapes, so the geology, the rivers, and the coasts of the UK. You look at weather and hazards, things like hurricanes and droughts, and how the climate is changing over time. And you're also looking at ecosystems here in the UK, but also in tropical rainforests. And you'll be looking at what happens to ecosystems if too many things are damaged or taken away. It's just like gender. And if too many things are damaged, <laughs> the whole thing falls down. I hope you choose geography GCSE, and thank you very much. Oh, I think Miss Huxford does human geography. Let's see what she has to say. Miss? Okay, so we start our human topic by looking at how such a small, little, tiny market town that has actually got more canals than Venice turns into a huge urban area with Cadbury's World on its doorstep. A little bit weird, we need to know why that happened. We also take a look at how somewhere that's got the second largest slum in the whole world also has the most number of billionaires in the world. Again, really weird, how on earth can that happen? The final kind of thing that we take a really good look at in our human geography is actually, we use six times the amount of resources that the earth currently has for us. Obviously, we can't keep doing that as we're not going to exist anymore. So how on earth are we going to fix that problem? Oh, I've heard Mr. Arthur and Miss Spearman get to go on a trip. Let's go and see what they're up to. And for paper three, we get a fantastic day out where we get to visit Eastbourne and we'll look at the quality of life in Eastbourne. So we'll have to walk to three different areas, have a look at the quality of buildings and look at the quality of the area and do some environmental surveys. And then we go to the beach at Berlin Gap and uh, we take a measurement using our ranging poles and clinometer to find out how steep the beach is because the steeper the beach, the more likely it is to erode. And you may or may not know that Berlin Gap's not here for long. It's going to erode away. Miss, who's going to teach me? Okay, right, so GCSE team for next year it might be Miss Spearman, it might be Mr. Reed, Mr. Vaughan, it might be Mr. Skilton, it might even be Big Boss himself, Mr. Arthur, or it might be me, Miss Huxford. What? Is that Mr. Callard? Not the Mr. Callard, surely not. The Mr. Callard, Deputy Head Teacher, Mr. Callard is on our GCSE team. Well, I'm sorry. We just make sure that you know exactly what you're getting yourself in for. So, you're going to sit one paper, which is a physical paper, basically all things natural. So, rivers and coasts, weather and climate, and ecosystems. That works out roughly 37% of your grade. One hour and a half exam at the end of year 11. Exactly the same thing for paper two. However, this time, it's going to be about the way the world's changing. So, changing cities, global development, and resource management. Again, one and a half hours in the exam, 37% of your GCSE is nailed. Paper three then, finally the one that you're going to do, again, one and a half hours, only worth 25% this time, but that's all about field work and UK challenges. We are pretty good at it as well, just going to put it out there. Best results in East Sussex in 2019 and second best in 2018. Sir, I need help. You've come to the right place. So how can geography help you in your life? Geography is a subject that covers a huge kind of breadth of topic areas and in terms of related to life, when you move on to A-level and you start applying for universities, it only opens doors, it doesn't close it. It's very well thought of by universities, whatever subject you decide to pursue later on in your educational career. In terms of A-level, we do lots of different skills from across all disciplines, a bit of maths, a bit of science, obviously some map work. So those skills become transferable later in life um, when you go into careers that involve any sort of problem solving or challenges, whether it be with the environment, buildings and urban areas, or outside of what you would consider typical geographical subjects.